Good morning, everyone. I'm Kevin Galetz, and I'm a program facilitator working with Regina District Industry Education Council in the SunWest School Division. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce a former student of mine, uh, Julie Quinney from Calgary. Julie is in the interior design business. She operates her own business as the lead designer of Q Design Incorporated. Julie has an interesting career journey, uh, starting as a graduate of Rosetown Central High School to a successful career in the oil and gas industry and has now made a significant career shift to where she is at today as an interior designer. Just a reminder before we begin, this session is being recorded and will appear on the RDIEC YouTube channel for you or others to view in the future. I'd also like to request that any students who watch this session go to our website at www.rdiec.ca and complete the student survey that can be found on the home homepage. Completion of the survey gets your name in a monthly draw for a $50 gift card. Again, the website is www.rdiec.ca. So thanks for doing this, Julie. Uh, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Great. Thanks for having me. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I'm Julie. Um, as Kevin mentioned, um, I grew up in uh, Saskatchewan, Rosetown Central High School. Um, so that's how I know Kevin, and I really appreciate him reaching out and asking me to do this. So um, I um, own and operate um, my own interior design business. Um, I've been in the field since 2013. And um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about what that means and how I got here. So Oh, no, why isn't my screen? There we go. <clears throat> so what is interior design? Um, it's a lot of things and probably a lot of things that people don't necessarily um, know when you're not in the field. So essentially we're creators. Um, it's all about function. And then of course, style and making things um, look nice. So a there's so many things that that come into play. Um, the biggest thing is uh, that you need to listen, um, understand what clients need and want, what their goals are. And then it's a lot of planning. Um, so I say plan, plan, and plan more. Um, the idea is, is to have all of those things figured out, mapped out, and all the details taken care of um, before you begin. So what do we do? We do floor plans, um, space planning. We do layouts of rooms and walls. Um, we do electrical plans, and that's something that um, you know people don't think of as well. But it's so important to have um, you know electrical um, layouts that make sense for your home and your family. We do elevation drawings. So if you imagine, <clears throat> um, say, a kitchen. <clears throat> and say there's four walls in a kitchen, well, every single one of those vertical planes needs um, attention and needs a layout and needs a design. So those are elevation drawings. So it's a vertical drawing of a, of a wall. Um, we do surface selections. So imagine everything inside of the drywall. Um, those things all need to be um, selected. And uh, so we do that. We do we source furniture. So once we kind of do all of the design of the home, then you know we're often asked to furnish it. So do furnish, furniture selection, um, soft finishes. So think anything. So you know we talk about um, surface selections that are generally are hard selections. Well, now we we choose soft furnish, finishes. So think fabrics, wallpapers, window coverings, those sorts of things. Um, we also have the opportunity to design custom furniture, and I know not everybody does this, but it's something that I really enjoy. Um, oftentimes, you can't find pieces that are, um, you know, that are going to suit a room or size properly for a room, or just something that really unique that you want to share in the room. So that's um, often what I get to do is to design furniture, which is really fun. You do a lot of presenting to clients and a lot of meeting with clients. Um, so we're often, um, you know, bringing in, I'm bringing in a cart of, of those selections and showing people. Um, I'm often presenting on um, an iPad or a computer to show them lots of visuals, because obviously that's really important in, in our job. Um, there's a lot of estimating. So there, I, there's always a big difference, in my opinion, and what I've learned over the years between an estimate and a budget. Um, so the estimates are kind of that thing that you go over at the beginning, a budget is where you kind of come to terms with what what it is that you want to spend and then lots of scheduling um 
So anything scheduling, obviously, as we know, um, when we, we would come up with a plan, um, people and you're in someone's house, people really want to know what's happening and, you know, when they can be in there and when they can't be. So the schedules are really important. Um, there's a ton of product knowledge. So you're constantly learning. Um, you can, um, you know, go to a, a function at say a hardwood floor place and you learn something new about flooring that day. Um, you know, you'll learn about countertops. Um, I had the opportunity to travel to Spain recently um, to see the headquarters for a quartz manufacturing facility and also to see a marble quarry. So we got to go and, and see how they actually carve out the stone from, from the earth. So that was really neat. So you're always learning and you're always trying to keep up to date on what um, options are out there um, and technology and, and all those sorts of things. Um, site meetings. So you're often on, so, you know, you meet with a client in their home and, and that's generally, um, you know, that is obviously their home, but as soon as you kind of take over and you're contracted to do a job, we then call them sites. Um, so we meet on site, um, you're meeting with contractors and all sorts of trades and suppliers. Um, so there's tons of meetings on site. You're also responsible for a ton of ordering, scheduling, installations, deliveries, setups, and often you're project managing a ton. And another big thing I think that um, is really important to, for people to understand is it's really all about relationships and communication. Um, that's with your client, that's with contractors and trades and suppliers. Um, clear communication is really, really important in our business. So who are the people that are in this industry? And I mean, I might have a bit of a different opinion on this, but obviously creative spirit. So you have to have that desire to, to create and um, to be creative. Um, but you also, in my opinion, um, need to have math skills. There's a lot of math in design, which is probably why I like it so much. I do have, um, I do have that sort of uh, background and that's, you know, I often find myself, um, you know, you're, there's, it's all about um, ratios and, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the principles of design next, but there is a lot of math and that you like to talk about feelings. So it's funny, you know, it's creative, it's math and it's about feelings. So, and you might say, well, what, what, what are feelings have to do? And when I first meet with clients and we were talking about say um, a main floor renovation, and the first questions, um, some of the first questions that I ask people, and I always joke, you know, especially sometimes with, with males, I'm, you know, I said, well, now we get to talk about feelings and the look on their face is quite funny. But the big thing is, um, it's not just about how we want a room or a space to look and function. It's about a feeling. So my questions are to them, well, how do you want this room to feel? How does it feel now and how do you want it to feel? And then those words um, are really important. And when I go back and start creating a space for them, those things that they say are really important for me to figure out um, the goals and how, how I'm going to sort of create a space that works for that particular person. Um, so principles of design, um, they're kind of five basic um, principles of design. So talk about balance. And again, this is where you're going to see that it's both creative and mathematical or logical. Um, so balance, we talk about, um, you can meet a client who's extremely symmetrical. So that balance means that on one side of the fireplace has to be exactly mirror what's on the other side of the fireplace. So we think about a focal point of a room. So we're looking at a wall with a fireplace on it. So they want a painting and a vase and a painting and a vase. They want it to be exactly the same. Um, so those are symmetrical. That's a symmetrical um, um, example of balance. And then there's asymmetrical. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it has to sort of balance. So we might have a painting and a vase, and we might have books and some candles. So it might not be exactly the same, but it balances. Then we talk about rhythm and you think music, you think of beat, right? So it's about repetition. It's about... Um, having sort of things repeat and things sort of flow. So you, when you walk into a room, 
You don't want your eye to just go to one place and stop. You want your eye to keep moving and you want that to kind of keep beating around the room. Harmony is kind of when all of the elements come together and that's kind of where feelings come into play. Harmony is when all of the elements come together to create a mood or a feeling and to sort of bring everything together and for it to feel right. Emphasis, so we talked about a fireplace. So there's, you know, if, if you go into a room and there's not um, a focal point, um, sometimes it can feel a little bit um, scattered. So um, emphasis can be, a focal point can be a, a window with a view. It can be a fireplace. It could be, um, you know, the range wall on a, in a kitchen. So there's lots of different ways um, that you can create emphasis in a room. Uh, proportion and scale. Again, it's math. Um, you know, we don't want a giant oversized sectional in a condo because it's going to feel um, that it doesn't belong. So proportion and scale um, come into play a lot. So when I'm designing a kitchen and, and creating a wall of cabinetry, proportion and scale um, are incredibly important um, part of that design. Um, some other traits, um, organization is really, really important. Um, there's a lot of moving parts um, any, in any part of design. So whether we're designing, doing you know, a kitchen renovation or a main floor renovation, doing an entire home design or for furnishing one room, being organized is really important. Um, it's important to make sure that everything goes smoothly. And it's also important because um, the client really appreciates that because again, we're in somebody's home and, you know, that's, we, we want to stay kind of on top of things and on that schedule. Your goal orientated. Um, these all are projects. Anytime you take on a client and you're hired to do, as again, a small job or a large job, it's a project. So you need to be goal orientated to kind of complete that, go through your process, go through your steps and then get to um, completion. A desire to learn because things are always changing um, and you can go to school and you can learn um, all of the principles you can learn about color you can learn about structure you can learn about all these things but things are constantly changing and things come up on a job site um, on one job site and then you have to kind of figure that out and then something completely different can happen on something else so desire to learn um, and then about learning about products and technology um, being a good communicator is really important. Um, you are constantly meeting with clients and with people. And even though, you know, maybe you're super creative and you can visualize, which I talk about further down, um, it's very, very rare that a client has that same ability. So for example, um, I could walk into um, someone's home and we're talking about a kitchen renovation. And I, you know, you start creating ideas and think about, um, I'm gonna say, probably like, like say Tetris or something where um, almost like in my mind, I can look around that room and I can see that I can visualize this new kitchen, especially once I get to the point where I've come up with a, with a plan and design, I can see that. And it's really, um, it's exciting. And um, it's, I'm, I'm really grateful that I have that ability. But when you, even when you describe it to somebody and say you bring a whole table full of selections to show them and you show them a, a one dimensional, two dimensional drawing, um, they still can't visualize it. So you have to be able to communicate um, what it is that, you, that you've created and to a point where the, the client can understand that. Um, find function exciting. Um, so functionality is a huge part of, of our industry. So essentially we're going in and we're meeting with clients and we're learning um, about their habits, about how they live. And then we are creating something that fits specifically with um, them and their family. So you have to find function really exciting. Um, the ability to visualize, which I spoke about a little bit earlier. Um, so you wanna be able to, um, you know, see, see the potential, see what it is that you're, that you're creating. You have to be professional. Um, again, you're constantly meeting with people 
all sorts of people. You're meeting with executives, um, CEOs, people who run major firms, and you're meeting with you're meeting with all different types of people. Um, so you need to be professional. Um, anytime you walk into a room um, or into an event or into anywhere, a supplier, um, sort of how you present yourself is your brand. So um, you're dressing the part, you're talking professionally, and um, obviously there's always things that we don't know the answer to. And in that case, the best, um, my best advice is to be honest, but to just act professional um, is a huge part of this job. And then details, um, you know, I can't, I can't speak to this enough, but um, attention to detail, um, an appreciation for the details. That's why um, I have a job. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about the principles of design um, and then details. And, and so a lot of times when you meet with people, um, they already know what they like. So they might show you pictures from a magazine. They might get you on their Pinterest account and show you. And they're like, well, I re or, you know, you're, say you're looking through some visuals. I really like that. But they don't know why they like it. Um, and obviously the best part is when you do complete a design for someone and they walk in and, you know, they're so they're beyond excited and, and you get messages after and they're really excited. They don't really necessarily know why that they have that feeling that they have, but it's a good feeling. That's because of all of these, the principles of design and the details, the details are so important. So in this slide, I have put up a bunch of photos from projects that I've completed where and they're kind of close up. So they're, you know, they're, they're about the details. So top, top left, we have a vanity. Um, but if you look at the detail in the millwork, which is the, the beautiful walnut um, vanity, um, just the angles um, and the, the lines that we chose there. And, and it's important. The second picture on the left, we did a pattern on the floor. So if you look closely, you can see that the floorboards are in sort of a railroad pattern to create sort of a, a detail in this really large hallway that we had in this um, uh, renovation we were doing. And then the bottom left, again, another vanity. Um, and we just talk about scale and proportion there. So if we look at the, the sizing of the pieces of wood and the drawer sizes and the mirror and the tile, everything sort of, there's a purpose to it. Um, to the right of that, we, it's just a little styling picture, but again, it's, it's details, scale and proportion, and all of those things that are important. And then we have a TV vanity, or sorry, a TV media unit. Um, and then to the right of that, if you can see the detail, that's a post. So we got a really close shot of a post in a bar that we did, um, which is just really unique and really interesting. Above that is a coffee table. Um, and I was able to design this table. Um, we needed a really large piece for the room. Um, so I was able to design that. And so the curve of that leg um, repeats itself in other places in that room. So that's kind of where we talk about rhythm and how we have some repetition. Um, actually, if you look above, that's the kitchen. So you see the curve of that corbel landing on the countertop. And then you have that little niche um, for olive oils or, or those sorts of things. And so these those details um, are, are what makes a project unique. And also what makes um, design, you know, really fun and uh, it makes sort of, it makes for very, you know, everybody kind of going to everybody gets a unique piece. I mean, that's really important to people. So details are super important. I can't stress that enough. So where do we do our jobs? And I, I have my own business and it's just, I talk about a team a lot. And my team is sort of a greater group. Um, there's only me in Q Design at the moment, um, but the kind of that greater group is the contractors that, that I work with. I have an architectural designer that I work with. And then all of those trade partners um, become part of your team. So where do we create? Well, you can be in a firm. So maybe you come out of school and you get hired by an interior design company. Um, so you might be in the office a lot. Um, you might work from home, which is uh, what I, my, my business practice, I were having a home office. Um, so I'm working from home. There's also collaborative workspaces that are become really popular in Calgary, um, where 
you know, it, and some are specific to interior design and some are specific just to creative people where you can sort of rent a space in a collaborative um, setting. And then you all have access to shared rooms, um, all, sometimes shared supplies and tools um, to work with as a designer. Um, so you're in your office and you're doing a lot of work, um, you know, on your computer, but then the majority, um, depending on the time and where you are in a project, um, you're in a client's home a lot. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, that client's home kind of gets renamed to the job site. So then you're on the job site a ton. Um, I, I kind of like to say, and I'll speak about my process a little bit later, but, um, about 75% of my work is done on a renovation before we even start demo. So a lot of the work that um, I do is at the very beginning of the process before any sort of anything starts at the job site. So then once the job site um, becomes a job site, so when we kind of take over the home and start the renovation, um, I still have a lot of opportunity to go to that space because there's a lot of those details that need to be taken care of. So even though I've done all the planning and all the design, we've ordered all the materials, which I'll talk about a little bit later, um, I'm still often on the job site. Um, you're in showrooms and supplier showrooms, so you're going to choose material. Um, you're going to learn about products. Um, and you're going to, again, create and foster those relationships. And you drive a lot. I often joke that I live in my vehicle. Um, but you are driving a ton. So you're driving to those job sites and you may have two, three, four, five renovations going on at a time and they might be in different stages. So you're driving all over the city, you're going to do pickups. And again, depending on where you are and whether you're working for a firm or working for yourself, that may or may not be part of your duties, but as a, as a business owner and sort of doing sort of all of those, all of those things myself, I am in my vehicle a lot doing a lot of driving. And where um, specifically, well, I, as Kevin mentioned, um, I am a majority of my work is in Calgary, um, but I also do some work in BC. Um, I have an office in BC, um, so multi-city. So if you get to the point where you're working for a firm, um, though that firm might not just operate out of one province or one city. Um, same with whether you decide to start your own business as a designer, um, you have the opportunity to work anywhere. I've done some work in Saskatchewan, actually. Um, I know that wasn't on my front page, but I have in the past. So multi-city, multi-province, and multi-country. So you do have the opportunity, as I mentioned, that I got, I had the opportunity, I've been to Spain twice now for work. When I left Energy, I didn't think that I would travel in this new job, but I was um, really fortunate to be asked to go. Um, and I know a lot of my fellow designers, um, you know, say you're working with a client in Calgary, and they have, um, you know, a second home in Arizona or maybe in the Bahamas. And so often people are asked to travel. So there, there is that opportunity there as well. So here I've shown a little bit about, um, so the top picture is um, we're doing selections for a renovation. And I'm actually at um, Cosentino, Calgary. And they um, develop, manufacture quartz. They have natural stone, um, and they have some many products. So there I am doing a selection, and I actually met with clients there to look at slabs, to look at the entire slab that what we I've recommended to go in their kitchen, and then I brought all of those other materials so that we can look at everything in in, in one space. So that's often what happens. Um, as well, you're meeting with clients at those supplier places. And so then we're kind of getting a full feel for how that um, all those finishes coming together. On the far right um, is when just in this in October when I got the opportunity to go to Spain. So that's in Cosentino's factory in Spain. Um, and we are doing a tour of their natural material. Bottom picture is just showing that was obviously during COVID because we're all wearing masks. Um, but we're presenting, um, we're looking at 3D models, but we're also um, going over plans with a bunch of different uh, different trades so that um, those meetings happen a lot where you're, um, where you're sort of double checking and you're remeasuring and you're going through the details with the various people who are um, involved on the site. What do you need to do the job? Um, 
I guess it's one of those industries where you're a little bit lucky. So say if you decide at some point that you want to start your own business, there's not a lot um, of sort of costs to start up. Um, you need a computer and or a laptop and a tablet. Um, you need writing tools, which I know for the young people, you might think that that's obsolete. Um, maybe you're, you're doing it on your computer. Um, I have a tablet with a, with a pen because you're constantly sketching, you're constantly taking notes. So whether that's on a, on a laptop, but you, you also need that ability to sketch. So we are constantly sketching whether it's like to show someone, okay, well, I think over here, um, you know, we could have some built-ins or this is where the fireplace would be. So you're constantly sketching when you're also coming in, say you're coming in to do a furnishing plan for someone, we have to take measurements of those rooms. You need to draw out the room and, and be very accurate about your measurements. So writing tools, however, that might, might look for you, a measuring tape and a laser. And, you know, it's funny. Um, my contractor who I work with a ton, has bought me several measuring tapes because I seem to lose them. So I have about six and I keep them all over the place in my car in different work bags um, because it's absolutely essential to come into any meeting with a tape measure. Um, Cause a client will be like, oh, well, what's 28 inches. And then, so you, then they want, they like to have visuals. So, and a laser is something that um, I didn't start out with. I started out with a, you know, old school measuring tape and so it was taking me a long time to measure spaces. Um, and then I got a laser and it was amazing. Um, kids find it fun too, to play with. But um, so then at, essentially you're shooting measurements with a laser tool, which speeds up that, uh, that measurement per day. You have a lot of samples. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, people want to see, touch, Feel. They want to understand the, the materials that you're suggesting for their home. So you have a lot of vendors on speed dial. Um, I keep a lot of, um, of samples in my office so that I can kind of grab things and go to meetings. Um, but there's also that opportunity where you need to go and, and get new things and get new samples. Um, so you always have those vendors on speed dial. They're often willing to ship things to your office or meet you and drop things off. But some of the things that, um, you take into a meeting, you're going to take your paint samples. So paint fans, I deal primarily with Benjamin Moore. So I have all their big kit, um, with all the paint fans. So you're taking that, you're taking stain samples, you're taking wood species. So people want to see what is the difference between, you know, rift white oak and a knotty alder or or walnut and they want to see all those things so you're, you're taking those pieces with you you're taking metal finishes um you're taking a, a tile grout countertops so you're you have you know these some of them are very heavy so you get your workout in on these days um fabrics um so you're taking actual fabric you've sort of recommended for the space so that people can see them it's also important um as we know with the online world you can go online and see photos of Rift White Oak. You can see photos of paint colors. You can see photos of tiles and gropes. And often when I present to a client, which we'll see a little bit later, sort of their mood board, I am showing pictures on a computer or a tablet, but it's really important to get those samples into your hands and then into the home and into the space because, um, you know, color and light um, make a huge difference. It's funny. I've often have people, I've had people say, oh, you know, I was shopping in, in Pottery Barn and I saw this paint color and that's what I want for my house. And, you know, they have the name and everything and it's like, okay, they know that's great that you saw some inspiration. Um, but getting that paint color into their particular home and it can look completely different. So it's really important to have those samples and take them into the space that you're actually going to use them in. That's really important. Um, and hardware. So hardware is another thing. So whether you're, so think cabinet hardware, think, you know, your door um, knobs and levers. So having those finishes is really important. Um, you do need some software. Um, so you're going to want, you're going to be creating floor plans and layouts and doing 3D modeling. Um, you need to track your time and your mileage um, accounting, like especially if you're in your own business, which I am. You need an ability to create documents, spreadsheets, and then presentation software. So there's a little bit of software that um, that you do need. 
And then some other tools that I mentioned, which maybe aren't, you know, something that you can grab onto, but you need patience and you need hustle. And it's kind of that, <clears throat> that balance, um, you need good people. So as I mentioned, um, you know, creating relationships with um, suppliers and trades is really, really important. Surrounding yourself with good people, um, whether you're a team of one, whether you're a firm of 10, you still have people outside of your firm that you're bringing into a project or that you're working with. So good people is is a, a, probably the most valuable tool, in my opinion. And then teamwork, which is kind of a natural um you know, a thing to talk about after we talk about good people, teamwork is so important. Um, you know, and I, as I mentioned, I'm, um, I'm the only one in Q design, but I have a team of people that I work with on a project and, you know, sometimes your clients become part of your team as well. And so it's really important, um, to be able to work in a team. So some of these photos are just showing, you know, we talk about tools. Well, the top left two photos are, it's a, it's a, a wood inlay that we did in a wine room. And we had all of these boxes of these walnut um, floor tiles. And there was a specific goal we were going for. Um, so, and so say we needed three boxes or five boxes of these wood tiles. Well, we, we ended up purchasing more and then selecting the specific ones that we wanted to use. So the first picture you can see, I've started a layout. And my contractor in the background is measuring out in the specific wine room you know, the exact sort of dimension of what we need. And then the second picture, you can see that we're almost done and we're kind of taping off exactly where those tiles are going to be cut. So that's, and it's funny, you know, actually my client took those photos because she was down there and uh, watching us work. And there's so many times during this project where she so appreciated that all of the people that, so, you know, that come in and were a part of something to, to, to take care of those specific details. If I were just to have left the boxes of that walnut tile, you know, with the installer, um, he would have chosen, you know, where are the cut lines and where do we start the pattern and what are the tiles? Instead, as you can see in the in the middle photo at the top, that's the final um, the final product in that room. And so that kind of that flow and how we does put where we put the colors. There's there's sort of a meaning to every single one of those tiles. Um, below that on the right. Um, we show how that, that's an entire slab and it's, I want to say, I think, believe it's from Brazil. Um, it's a quartzite that we, um, used for countertops and also for, um, a full height backsplash in this bar, which you can see in the bottom picture it's installed. So that's just showing you, you know, how the fabricators have brought that piece in. And then, uh, we actually had to bring it down sort of a, a sloped pathway. First, it was craned off the truck. It was, it was quite something actually cleaned up because it weighs thousands of pounds craned off the truck. And then on this sort of trolley or this, like this wheeled system and having to come down this big slope and this house was on the lake. And so, you know, we were all a little bit nervous because if the, if it got away from anybody, then it was gone into the lake. Um, so these slabs came in. Um, so there you can kind of see a a job site that's completely in the middle of construction. Um, if you can, if you look at the floor in that picture, you can see all of these kind of loops and that's where all, everything was kind of rutted out. And then we put an inflow, we had a boiler and in-floor heat. So anyway, there's the slab coming in. And then the bottom picture, the bottom right um, is Brandon and I, and he's the contractor that I work with um, most of the time. Um, so this is photo day. Um, so after you wrap a project, um, we I always get professional photos done. Um, and so that was, and it's usually a really fun time. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And so she grabbed a picture of Brendan and I, um, uh, to show sort of, you know, what we've done in that space. So process, um, you know, it starts with, um, with meeting a client, with getting to know a client, um, and getting to know a client and getting to know a client. So you spend a lot of time, you ask a lot of questions, um, to figure out, you know, what it is that, um, what it is that they are, the, what they're looking for, how their family um, functions. Um, so we have a lot of meetings. And then once they hire us to do a job, um, you know, we start with a measurement and a, and, a, and a layout. And so on the top left, I'm showing my process. I always start with pencil drawings. 
So I literally get out my pencil and paper, which might seem archaic, um, but that's how um, my creative process starts. So once I start visualizing every single wall and detail in a kitchen, um, I might start with a, a sketch that's not quite so perfect and I sketch everything out. And then, um, you know, I get out my tools. So I have a, you know, I have a, a scale tool and a ruler and I kind of go through. And so that pencil drawing is all to scale. Um, I've decided they're the type of cabinet fronts that I wanted and I've drawn them in appliances, tile, how I want that hood fan, the custom hood fan to be. Um, so that's sort of the, the start, start of my process. And then um, I give all of those pencil drawings um, to, um, I, I pass them off to an architectural designer who actually come, does the plans for me. I used to do the plans myself, and now that's something that I contract out. And she also does my 3D modeling. Then you can see that selections picture. Um, so that's essentially, you know, I want to sort of take all of the, all of the materials that I've selected for the job. Um, I want to take them into the home and I want to show my client. So now I have, um, I have that sort of kit of selections. I have all my drawings. I've given my drawings to my architectural technologist. She works up with, comes up with, a, comes up with a 3D model based on all of um, my selections and my drawings. On the right hand side is that mood board. So this is what I'm gonna give my architectural um, technologist so that she knows what I'm using for all my different materials. So I have all my countertops, I have my wood species and my wood stains. I have my tile, my lighting, um, some furniture that I wanna use in the space, um, my hardwood flooring, my cabinets, my faucets. And so all of sort of that mood board is sort of that one snapshot um, to show a client to say, how does this feel? You know, am I am I hitting the mark here? So I'm showing them that visual. I'm showing I'm giving that also to my architectural technologist, and I'm get, bringing that selections package, which sort of mirrors that mood board to a meeting. Once we get into the process, obviously there's there's a bunch of things that happen. There's people creating the cabinets. There's people um, I'm ordering lighting and stools, and there's people installing um, um, appliances and backsplash. On the on the bottom left. You know, I, I have it labeled as chemistry and that is hundred percent what that is. So when we, when we refinish hardwood floors, which we, we love to do, if there's, if there's a really um, beautiful product in a home already that maybe we just, we don't prefer the color or the finish. Um, we, we often like to refinish. So that is a, an example of where they've sanded down um, this area in the home. And then I have some goal you can see some sort of wood chips around there and I have some some goal stains. And so then, then we're literally, um, you know, mixing stains and adding a little bit of this or a little bit of that to try and get to this perfect um, match. Because even though I have a, a you know, a, again, it's important for me to be on site for those, for those um, specific details. Because I, even though I have a piece of kind of goal stain, um, that might be on a different, type of wood so say that is on a piece of walnut and so the the little piece of wood that you can see at the bottom of that is actually walnut but their floors are oak so stain is going to take differently to different types of wood so it's really important to um to be on site for those types of decisions um i've showed it before pictures so you can see what the kitchen looked like before everyone loves a good before and after um so there's the kitchen before and then the bottom right is showing, um, it's actually a rendering, it's not a photo. So that's the rendering that I present to clients. And, and that's always a really exciting time is when you're presenting selections and you're presenting these 3D models. Um, Cause that that really gets people excited about, about the process and about moving forward into construction. So I, I actually, this project is complete. I don't have, um, I haven't done my photos yet but I wanted to show you you know, the before and after with the rendering. And, and I've, um, I can, I can say that it, it's incredible. And the, it's really nice to see the finished product and how it sort of relates to that 3D model. So that's the process. So why do we do it? What are the benefits? Um, um, you know, what do we get from doing this job? So it's like the, it's the feel goods. Um, I think creators create, uh, we have a desire to learn and we have a desire to leave something better than when it started. Um, so 
you know, we're, we want to transform that kitchen. And we have that. It's not only about it looking good, but it's about having all those meetings with the clients and determining um, what their habits are and what's important to include in that kitchen and how to make it super functional for them and their family. So we have that desire to, to learn and to study behaviors and, and to create something that works specific for those people. I do it, all, presentation day is very exciting. So the slide previous where I showed you um, the mood board and the selections and the 3D model, when you get to that stage uh, where you get to present that to a client, it's it's my one of my favorite days. It's right up there with when you get to show them their finished product. And it's because they've hired you, um, they're trusting you to sort of take all of those, the, the, the words that you've asked them to describe things, their feelings, um, their habits and their, and how they operate as a family and as an individual. So you've taken all that information and you've then created, you've created something for them. And when you get to present that to them and they're, you know, you get to see the look on their face and see how excited they are to move forward. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's, I guess, affirmation that you've been doing your job and that, um, they're really excited about moving forward with the process. So that's one of my favorites. Um, times is presentation day. Um, you have, and as I've mentioned, you have the opportunity to improve an individual or a family's way of living through well thought out design. Um, and you know, I don't take that lightly. Um, I'm really passionate about it. Um, I, I have always worked with um, people. I haven't worked with a home builder and I'm not saying that I won't, um, but I haven't up until now, because I really love that experience. I love um, getting to know people. Um, I love creating something specific for that person or family um, versus doing something generic. So that opportunity is something that I definitely don't um, take lately or for granted. Um, seeing your vision come to life, um, even though um, you have the ability to visualize, which I mentioned, I can so say I come up with that design and I walk into their home and I can see it. I can look, I can look around the room and I can actually see how it's going to look. And that's really exciting. And then you come up with a mood board and you get all of those selections and you're showing them the, the 3D model. But still, even for me, when I, I walk in, um, I still get overwhelmed. And the project that I showed previous where we did the bar, we also did their entire main floor, which I'll show you some photos of later. Um, I still get a feeling when I walk into those spaces and, and that's what we want to create. We're creating a feeling, we're creating, um, you know, a mood and, and, and really um, seeing your vision come to life is, is very, very exciting. It might just be um, one piece of furniture that you design, but then you see it in real life, or it might be one room that you're furnishing. It's not always a large scale renovation. Um, we do it, you know, we, <clears throat> we do have opportunities to travel. So whether it's the example that I gave you that I was um, had the opportunity to go to Spain and with a with um, Cosentino, or you know when you're traveling on your own, um, you're always collecting inspiration. Um, the days are gone where I walk into a restaurant and just um, just think about you know what I'm going to order for something to eat or drink. Um, your eyes are constantly moving. You're constantly appreciating and looking at, <clears throat> at things a lot differently. And that happens when you travel as well. Um, sort of your appreciation and what you look at and what you, what moves you and what excites you um, <clears throat> is all of those, um, all the architecture, all of the, the appreciation for how things are done and, and the details. Um, relationships, <clears throat> excuse me, friendships and the feeling of community. And that's another big reason why, why I do it. As I mentioned, um, I prefer um, working with clients directly <clears throat> and it's to create those relationships. Um, I've, I've created friendships from clients that, um, that I've had. And it's also with all of those people that you work with, your trades, um, contractors, trades, suppliers, you develop those relationships with those people, <clears throat> with the people and, and also fellow, fellow designers. Um, <clears throat> I also have had the opportunity to be involved in a in a, a nationwide group. It's called DDA, it's uh, Decorators and Designers Association of Canada. 
Um, I was introduced to them actually when I, in my schooling, which I'll go through a little bit later. Um, and that is a real sense of community. So it's where designers come together. Um, we do product knowledge events. We used to do them once a month pre COVID. Uh, we haven't quite got back on track yet, but it's that feeling of community and the feeling, um, you know, there's, we, it's nice to kind of have that open conversation, um, especially if you work um, on your own and have your own business, it's nice to be able to, you know, maybe you need to vent about something that's going on on a job site, or maybe you, um, you know, your painter fell ill and you need a new painter. So you might want to reach out to that, that community to find out if there's someone else you can use. And I'm, again, talking about feelings, but creating a feeling in space and, and, you know, the reward that that has um, when a client, you know, texts you months later from, from their home and tells you how much they're enjoying their space and how, you know, they so appreciate, um, appreciate the time that you took to, to um, for their project. So a happy client makes me very, very happy. And what that leads to is referrals and a referral is the highest compliment in my business. Um, if that person that you spent time with and that you, um, you know, created something in their home, um, talks to their family and friends about what it's like to work with you and those family and friends come and see, you know, their home and then they reach out. That's, um, for me, um, that's a feel good. And that's, um, why I do what I do. Oh, can it be challenging? So we talked about, you know, the good parts and why it feels good and, and absolutely, um, as Kevin mentioned, I was in oil and gas for, for a really long time. And I was in a very, very high stressful, high stress job, um, high risk. And, you know, people often ask me or think that, you know, well, now I mustn't have, you know, oh, you went from a really stressful job and now you just, it's just fun. You just spend other people's money. And, you know, that's a real, obviously simplistic way to look at it. I know they're just poking fun at me, but um, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, the first one I list is HGTV, which I'm sure everybody, excuse me, everybody's familiar with. And if you're not, um, your parents probably are. And I mean, I, I have watched it. It's not that I think that it's a bad, it's a bad channel. It's really great to get inspiration. Um, but what it doesn't help for the people who are really, you know, doing the, doing the jobs, um, people have unrealistic expectations, um, time, you know, they have, a crew of people in there and they renovate your home in what a week or a weekend or, uh, or a month. And that's really not realistic. Um, also those people on those shows are, are actors. I, I don't want to burst any, but it's bubbles here. And so I won't, uh, go into any more detail, but there it's, it's acting. Um, the next thing I talk about is unrealistic expectations, um, that people might have clients might have. So the first thing that um, that we do when we meet with people is we're really open and we're really honest about um, timelines, budgets, um, supply chain issues, and just sort of how long a process is going to take and and um, what's involved from a cost perspective. So the first thing you have kind of have to do is tackle those unrealistic ex expectations, um, and what that what is real or what what is sort of true to to real life in those shows on hgtv is things always come up unexpectedly that is true i don't think there's been one project small or large where something hasn't um gone wrong um it happens all the time so for example we're working on a project right now you know we created a beautiful main floor for these people they're so excited and of course they have a budget which 99% of people do, which you're always mindful and respectful of. We get into a project and it's a, say it's an older home and we always talk and, you know, the contractor talks a lot about how he can't see through walls, which I really think that, you know, we need to check that technology has got to happen. I think there is actually a little device that you can get. So I might get that, get him that for Christmas. That's always his joke. And it's true. So once we get, we come up, we can have, we have everything planned. We have um, budgets that we're respectful of, but as soon as we start that demo process um, for in this one example, we needed these, you know, a 22 foot long steel beam and a 16 foot long steel beam that had to tie into one another to actually create um, the open concept that we had agreed on and visualized and was really important to this family of four. 
Um, so obviously that was very unexpected. Um, it added a lot of time and it added um, money um, to the project. Um, so we had to increase the budget. And sometimes that means that can be really challenging because, you know, let's say they have a, a set budget and there's no, there's no um, leeway. So say we have, you know, it's 20% of the overall cost that we're now adding because or 10% because of this, this unforeseen circumstance coming up. And if that money doesn't, they, they can't increase their budget, well then, okay, well, we have to sit down and we have to figure out, well, what we need to cut something from the list. Um, you know, oftentimes um, people have a reserve, which we ask them to um, for some things, but some things that, that come up unexpectedly are outside of that range financially. Um, renovations are very stressful for homeowners. When we come in, we try to take as much of that away by um, being really good communicators, by being good schedulers, by ordering everything and managing everything. And that's a big responsibility of generally the contractor who is also the project manager. Um, it's still very, very stressful. So you can, you can explain things. Um, you can give them the heads up on what's going to happen. But, and a lot of times we ask the homeowners to move out of a home if we're doing a renovation. Um, it's still stressful. Um, they've had to relocate. Um, or if they're trying to, you know, sort of live in the basement or live somewhere else, it's dirty, it's noisy. Um, there's often things, um, you know, and then we have an unforeseen circumstance come up and we need to change our process. And now we've added time to the renovation. And then, and then there, you know, that's, so it's very stressful. So you're often um, working through um, those things with people. And, and again, being a really good communicator is really, really important. And you no, know, you're responsible for someone's home, and that is is nothing. It's it's a really big deal. Um, so that can be challenging, um, just having that responsibility. Um, and you're trusted at times with a lot of money. Um, you know, in the beginning, I did a lot of really small projects. Still, though, you are they're trusting you with their hard earned money to make um, the best decisions, the right decisions. And then once you obviously increase the scale of those projects, and now you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars um, to do a renovation, um, there's there's stresses that come along with that for for us managing the project because you know we are we're responsible for um, delivering. Clients don't always have the same style, vision, goal, or budget. And when I talk about client, when I say clients in this um, respect, so let's say you're working with a family. And often when we do large projects, I always ask to meet with both partners. So both husband and wife, um, because uh, it's really important to have, to figure, you know, to find out and to make sure everybody's on the same page. But a lot of times that say in this case, it's a husband and wife, they don't agree. Um, they don't have the same style. They don't have the same vision, goals or budget. And that can be really challenging. So it's your job to, um, you know, sort of, come up with a, a design that sort of pleases both. So you're kind of maybe, um, you're combining a couple of different styles um, to make something that works for them. And then you need to get on the same page about, about budget in particular. So those are tough conversations sometimes to have and it's it's tough to manage and you're, and you're not always, um, they're not always sort of on that same page. So that can be really challenging. Um, working with new people and new processes and challenging personalities, as I mentioned. And that can be from a client perspective and that can be from suppliers, trades, contractors. So if you're, when you're, anytime you're working with someone new, um, you know, kind of figuring out um, their process and, and what's important to them and, and how they work. So that, that can always be challenging with different personalities. We often are delivering um, bad news. Um, we need more money, we need more time. Um, you know, say you're, you're furnishing a home, um, and you know, that, um, especially during COVID, we had a lot of supply chain issues. And so, you know, you'd told, you know, you'd mentioned to someone that their furniture is going to be around in 12 weeks. And then the reality is it's 24 weeks. And so you're constantly, um, not constantly, but you're often delivering, um, bad news. So that, that can be really challenging. So um, I just thought I'd share um, a little, um, some after photos from some projects that I've worked on. And so the top left um, is um, a beautiful kitchen on the lake. 
um, that we that we got to got to design and work on, and we did their entire actually all three floors of their home. It's it's uh, it was a real real pleasure to work with these with these clients and um, get to make all their dreams come true. We 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 spent about two and a half years in their home um, over the course of the of all of the renovation. Um, on the far right, that's also from the same home, so that's their entryway. I got to design these custom. Um, walnut arched doors to go into the office, which was a really, really fun project. Um, the center is one of the first kitchens. Um, uh, maybe not well, it, within the first three, I guess, kitchens that I got to design. And it was really fun. I got to work with people who um, had a real um, desire to not just be, you know, just have a white kitchen or just be, you know, they were really eccentric and wanted and wanted a really creative design. So that backsplash where, you know, those are all individual tiles. And again, when I showed you how we were laying out those walnut floor tiles, I mean, that entire island was covered with this sort of pattern and then pulling tiles out, putting in a different one. And it started with a sketch. It started with me literally sketching out every single one of those tiles and shading them in to kind of come up with a feel. And then you get on, on the job site and then you're actually playing around with those tiles. You're working really closely with a tile setter. And then that was the end result. And we're really, really proud of that project. Uh, the le uh, bottom left is actually the entryway of that kitchen that we just looked at in the middle. So that was the entryway. Again, I got to design this custom walnut sort of screen and bench with a drawer kind of system and then got to do really fun color on the front door. So entryways are a really great opportunity to do something something interesting. The bottom right is a kitchen um, that I got to work on or uh, in my early, those are my early early days as well. Um, but still really, really proud of, of those projects. And then we're, these are all bathrooms. Um, but again, um, you can just see that depending on who you're working with, um, that's, I guess that's the other thing maybe to touch on is people often ask me if if I have a specific style and I do um, for my personal um, aesthetic and my home um, but that is something that um, you know obviously when you meet with people you're sort of figuring out what works for them and their style and their goals so you know are there maybe some consistencies or can you see sort of um, uh, that that maybe my touch has been put on something maybe um but often as you can tell there's a lot of different styles that are going on in, in all of these bathrooms and um that's a reflection of who you're working with and what's important to them um so the top right i'll start there that's a, a kid's bathroom that i got to do it was really really fun um and lucky lucky kids but um again i got a i had to the opportunity to create you know a really unique pattern with the wall tile and just the details of that shelf and the floating vanity, the niches in the shower, um, those types of things that, you know, you really have the opportunity to create something really, really special. Uh, the bottom right is um, a walk-in shower, meaning there's no curb. There's no, you just kind of walk in. These people live on a lake. They have hot tubs. They wanted people to be able to just walk right in, rinse off. So that was a really unique bathroom that we did on the bottom right. The center um, just a beautiful, it's a classic home in Calgary, um, you know, sort of more of a, a traditional feel. So we did this beautiful um, wood vanity in there as well. The bottom left, um, I got to create that, um, that vanity and design it from scratch, which is really, really exciting. Um, uh, this Anyway, this family, um, I had the ability to be very, very creative with them. So that was very exciting. So everything in that room is very um, specific and purposeful and um, fully designed um, by me. So it was really fun. The top left, um, again, another kid's bathroom, so, um, some girls. And so we were, you know, we picked a fun color for the vanity. Um, but again, um, just showing you kind of all the different um, styles, though they're all bathrooms, but all kind of very unique and different. Um, so there's obviously another reason why, why we work and that's to earn a living. Um, so I'm going to try to speak a little bit generally. So say you, um, finish some schooling and you go to work for someone, I would say the range would be anywhere from 25 to $75 an hour. Um, and again, that can change if you decide to run your own company. Um, we talk about, you know, when they asked me to talk a little bit about benefits, 
And that really is dependent on the employer. Um, so if you go to work for a firm, they may have a benefits package where they offer you as part of your employment contract. And that would mean, you know, health benefits, think dental, um, health, drugs, all that, I, I, and all that kind of stuff. For, for me running my own company, um, I, um, you know, Blue Cross has a lot of options for individuals and for businesses. So that's what, what I do. Holidays, again, it's going to kind of depend on where you land after school. Um, but I believe in Alberta, the minimum is three weeks. Um, I think Saskatchewan is, is, is the same. So three weeks and up. So obviously with seniority, um, sometimes you earn more vacation. Um, what are the hours generally Monday to Friday? I said nine to four, maybe it's eight to five. Um, sort of, sort of a general business <laughs> Again, in the beginning of my career, I did a lot of evening meetings and I did a lot of weekends um, just to kind of, you know, fit with, with what people were wanting. Now I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, I stick pretty close to those business hours and try to set those boundaries. So I mentioned at the bottom, there's different ways to contract projects as a business owner. Uh, so as a business, business owner, um, when I, when I go to contract a job, I, you can, it can be hourly, so I can give them an, an estimate, estimate to say it's going to you know, 100 hours to complete this job. Um, you could do a percentage of, of the job budget or you can do fixed fee. Those are all options in terms of how to price. I personally do um, an hourly rate and I have I have examples of why the other ones um, didn't really work well. If you do a fixed fee job, for example, you're in someone's home and you say, oh, I can furnish your house and it's going to cost you, you know, $2,000 for design fees. But then there you so you schedule meetings and you have it kind of planned out. And then well, while you're while you're here, can you just come and look at the bathroom? Because I have some questions. So then you end up, you know, and you end up spending more time with that client than you've budgeted for, but you can't really invoice for it because you've set this fixed fee. And then as a as a business owner, um, there's also other avenues um, for revenue. So selling products. So when you're selling furniture, for example, um, um, and doing whole, you have access to sort of designer only and wholesale uh, products. So there's an opportunity there as well. And then services. So, um, you know, if you're con hiring out to, um, you know, a, a window covering installation, you have, you, you, I, some people do, some people don't, but you can um, sort of mark up those services as well. What do you need to start? So education, um, there's a bit of a difference between interior design and interior decorating. Um, and there's different schools, um, for, to accomplish both. Um, I, I went to Mount Royal university and I did the continuing education. So it's a certificate certificate program. And generally those certificate programs have decorating in the title versus design. Um, the, the general, and I'm going to be very general about it. So please feel free to, to do your own research, but the general difference, um, when you have an interior design degree. The focus is really on a lot of what I talked about today. It's about, <clears throat> you know, studying behaviors. It's about creating um, spaces that are very logical and highly functional uh, for people. So you learn a lot about, you do learn about structure, you learn about kitchen, bath, you learn about all these sorts of design, um, very specific to those, those areas. Um, when you do an interior decorating certificate, um, you, it's very, it's not, you don't really touch on structure. And you don't necessarily touch on or spend a lot of time on kitchen and bath design. You spend time on doing selections for those and doing still the electrical plans and the layouts, but you're not necessarily, you're kind of given a plan already that's already been done. And then you are sort of choosing selections. So those are the difference in the education part of things. Um, there's a number of different places you can go for the degree program. Mount Royal University has a program for the degree. They also have a program for the certificate, which is what I did. Um, as Kevin mentioned, I, I, I have a, a degree from the University of Saskatchewan. I have a Bachelor of Commerce. So for me, um, I didn't want to spend three more years in school when I decided to change careers. Um, so I did the certificate program. And then all of my learning has been on the job. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but for certificate programs, we have the Mount Royal University again, that has that continuing education program. U of C, to my knowledge, has a certificate program. So does Bow Valley College, which a lot of my um, colleagues in the, in the industry have, that's where they went to school. 
There's lots of options for online education. So again, do your research um, and look into that. There are a lot of people in this industry that are self-taught that have no professional training. And some of those people uh, would be famous names that you would know. Um, and a lot of times they do not have um, specific training, excuse me. Um, so they are all self-taught. Um, so that is is one option. My advice would be is to go and get some some education. Um, there are a lot of things that you that you learn when you when you take some of these courses, a ton of things to learn. And then and then you know you keep learning and you keep growing constantly. How did I get here? So I, I know I'm already running um, long on my time here, so I'll try to speed it up. Um, how did I get here? Well, I grew up in Saskatchewan. Um, I always loved, you know, I was always rearranging my room and I did a wallpaper project with my mom, which gosh, I'm sure she would have uh, more stories to tell you about that. Um, my dad was a carpenter by trade, a welder, a farmer, but a carpenter by trade. And, and I, he was always, um, fixing things and building things and, and doing things. And, and, and I guess me into adulthood, I always had that. I love taking on projects around the house. Um, and so that was always fixing things and I was very handy. Uh, I went to the University of Saskatchewan. I have a Bachelor of Commerce degree. I majored in finance with a minor in marketing. And then I spent 13 years in the en energy industry in Calgary, um, which was, uh, I, I had a really incredible um, time there. I had a really great career. Um, I was a natural gas trader for 10 years. Um, it was very high risk high energy, fast paced. I traveled a lot. Um, I built a ton of relationships, um, which actually um, served me very well when I decided to change careers and go into design. Um, I'll, honestly, the first couple of years um, when I was in, in the design business, my, my clients were all people that I knew from energy people that I'd done business with their friends and family. So that really served me well to have that network of people. Um, <clears throat> that I was, uh, vice president of business development and marketing for a startup, um, brokerage company, um, also in oil and gas. So a ton of relationship building. I got to, you know, to learn a lot about branding, um, projects and, and a goal oriented role. So all of those things, I, I really served me well when I moved into, um, when I moved in, into my new, my new passion, or I guess my, when I decided to, so what inspired me? I had an overwhelming desire um, to do something creative. I had no idea what that meant. And it took me a while to figure it out. Um, I think, you know, some other things that kind of played into it <clears throat> when I purchased my first home and then my second home, and then, you know, you're making maybe really small changes, but you're furnishing. Um, I did a lot of traveling when I worked in energy. Um, I had the opportunity to go a lot of places. And so, and I really found myself appreciating that architecture and design from around the world. Um, so those are all things I think that kind of, you know, nudged me in that direction. So then I uh, left energy and I enrolled in the Mount Royal program and I finished in just, uh, it was just around a year, just over a year. Um, and then it was the decision. Um, and I talked to, you know, my professors and do I go work for a firm and get some experience, um, doing that? Um, I, I considered it, um, but when it came down to it, um, I'd worked for other people for a really long time. And my, my goal with this new venture um, was to have more flexibility. Um, so I decided to start my own company. Um, Q Design was created in 2014, it was incorporated. And then, as I mentioned, my first uh, projects were all with people that, um, that I knew from Energy. So I was really lucky. And then they passed my name along to their family and friends. Um, in the beginning, uh, it's a ton of networking. I didn't, you know, outside of my school, I didn't know anything about um, anything about design and construction in Calgary. Uh, so a lot of networking, many, many, many hours, most of which you can't bill for. Um, you know, getting that practical experience. I was lucky that, you know, these people knew me from energy and they were excited about my new um career and they asked me to come into their home and help them. And, and, uh, so then you're learning, you're asking and you're doing, so you're, you know, you're calling on those people that you've not net, net work worked with and you're, um, 
you're learning, you're asking a lot of questions and then you're doing, and, and then you're learning again, and then you're doing it again and you're doing it differently from what you've learned. Building trust with clients, developing relationships with trades and suppliers. Um, and then for me, small jobs um, and small projects led to really large projects and large renovations. And that's majority of what I do now is uh, mid to large scale renovations. And I love that. I love being able to work with someone through the whole process. And then hopefully once we've done, you know, a really nice big renovation and, uh, and then I also get to do the furnishings and the stylings and the finishing touches. So when we talk about interior decorating versus the interior design, a lot of times interior decorating is you're just brought in in that in the end to sort of, so all the structures done all the layouts done, all the kit, like all of the house is built, um, for, for an example, but you're coming in to do furnishings, maybe some lighting, maybe some soft finishes, um, but you're not necessarily, and maybe you're doing some hard finish selections as well, um, but you're not as much involved in the creation and the design of, and the function of the home. Um, so that's sort of that difference between interior design and interior decorating. Um, even though my training is in decorating and um, from the experience that I've gotten on the job and all of the continuous learning that I've done and the people that I work with, um, I have transformed um, that into um, a design career where I am creating um, spaces um, for people. I'm actually working on a, a, a new home build where we're getting to do a custom home, which is really, really exciting. Um, so yeah, small jobs led to led lead to large jobs. And that's over time. I've been doing this for nine years now. Um, and it's word of mouth. Um, I don't do a lot. If you go check out my Instagram, um, you'll see that um I could be a lot better with a social media. Um, all of my um work, 90% of my work comes from word of mouth referrals. Um, you know, people recommend me that that have known me or as I say that I've worked in their home and they pass my name along so that's um that's my marketing strategy to date um and how do I define success that's changed um I think it's constantly changing and evolving and I think that that's okay I think that when you're a young person trying to figure out what you want to do you have an idea of what maybe success means to you and, but that's going to change from when you're 18 to when you're 28, 38, 48, um, it's going to change. And for me, it has. And, and um, you know, in the beginning, I, I had a, a really great career and energy. And um, and it, so it's, I, I didn't leave that because I wasn't happy. Um, I, I loved what I did. Um, I just had the opportunity to, to shift, to pivot, to um, try something different. And I think that's okay. I think... Um, you know, it was overwhelming. I remember as a, as a young person growing up in, in rural Saskatchewan, where you're maybe not exposed to, um, to all of those different things that you can do, all the possibilities. It feels a little, it feels overwhelming. And it feels like you're asked to make a really big decision um, when you don't necessarily have the exposure. Um, so knowing that it's okay um, to switch careers, it's really common. Um, and this is one thing that, that Kevin probably said to me, you know, 20, 30, 30 years ago, um, which is still true now is like, no, no education is, um, is a waste of education. And so I have a commerce degree. I'm still using it. Um, I'm running my own business largely because, um, I have that training. Um, so yeah, how you define sex is going to change and, and that's okay. Um, and I think that it's, it's always evolving. There are a lot of opportunities in the design field, especially during COVID. We, um, in the beginning, I wasn't sure how it was going to affect our industry. I thought it might be the first thing that people eliminate from their budget and the exact opposite happened. People were spending more time in their homes and realizing that they weren't functioning well for their family or they were just tired of their furniture, tired of their kitchen countertops or something and they and they wanted to make a change. Um, my my advice is, is um you know, if this is something that you decide to do and you go and, and take your schooling beyond that, you're going to need to build your portfolio. So I've been showing you some photos of my projects. You need to, it, it, it's an expensive thing to do to sort of document your projects. Um, but building a portfolio is really important um, and creating and developing um, relationships, huge in this business. Um, the fact that interior decorating can lead to design. 
Um, I 100% believe that because um, I feel that that's something that I've I've transformed to. And then um, design can mean a senior designer position. So you may start as a junior, you may start as a design assistant. And then with time and experience and building your portfolio and creating those relationships, you can you grow into a senior designer position. And then maybe you decide you want to start your own company. Um, and then you have a lot of freedoms and you have that, I mean, you, then you wear a lot of hats. So you're not just a designer, um, you're HR, you're the accountant, you're the marketer, um, you're, you're a lot of different things. Um, but there are opportunities to, um, you know, to not only work for a firm. There's also a lot of times people with, especially interior decorating certificates, um, and interior design um, degree people, you may want, you might want to go work for a supplier or a store. So a lot of those places are hiring people with our, with education to come and work for them. If you imagine as a person going, wanting to build a home and you walk into a kitchen cabinet place, all of those people that are, are designing kitchens have some sort of training. Um, maybe it's, it's just self-taught, but they do have training and experience with kitchen design. So that might be another avenue that you would want to want to go into is to work for a supplier or a vendor, um, furniture, decor, even fashion. There's a lot of overlap between fashion and, and design. You know, so is this a good career to have sort of balance in your life? And they all, everyone says, I don't know, you know, it's all about balance and it, it really is true. So um, I'm going to speak from my personal experience where I went from working in a really high demand a very demanding position and energy and you know I had to be at my desk between seven and one and I rarely left um and, and into this this opportunity where as I say you know I did decide to start my own company but I wanted that freedom and so for me owning and operating your own business it allows um for a lot of freedom um you can take the projects that best suit you and sure at the beginning when you're um, starting out, you're gonna wanna take all the projects, any one that you can get your hands on. But as you grow and as you develop your business and understand sort of how, what clients you you want, like you sort of have to, that manifestation, like what, who do I wanna work with? What type of projects do I wanna work on? And then once you get to work on some of those, then those are the ones you showcase. And those are the ones that you've tried to foster for next time. So it does allow for great balance. Um, but so you balance work, family, life. Um, you have that opportunity in this role, especially if you decide to, to um, start your own business. Um, you can choose your hours. Um, I have general business hours. Um, and and I, I mentioned here to, to develop healthy boundaries. And that's something that took me a little while to learn with your own business. Um, you know, and that is a I guess another challenge is, is sometimes people think that you're you can be contacted at all times of day and and weekends and so to set have healthy boundaries is something that I it took me a little while to learn but it's really important um, to kind of keep those business hours obviously if there's some um, you know um, something at a project site that needs your immediate attention well you you probably need to phone somebody back immediately um, but if you're contacted on a Saturday you know and you're busy with your family your friends. Um, it's okay to wait till Monday to return the call or the email um, and have fun. No matter what you decide to do, um, work is work and it's not always going to be, um, you know, it's, it's, it, there's obviously a lot of seriousness that goes into any sort of career and, and, but to have fun with what you're doing is really important. Um, especially in this business, that's why I'm doing it. I chose it because um, I have that opportunity to, to be creative and work with people. So have fun. I actually have that in my contract. I have a, a fun clause in there. Um, when it's less fun, which it will be, it, it, it isn't, oh, it isn't just going around and spending other people's money. There's um, the challenges that I spoke about, but when it's less fun, you need to shift. You need to pivot, evaluate and learn, and then apply that to what you do next. And that's in any career. I would not just interior design. Um, in this photo, um, I actually show um, it's, I took on a, a project a couple of years ago during COVID. Um, I bought a place in Kimberly. Um, the top photo is a, is a real before. It's very dark. 
Um, there's a lot of walls, original sort of flooring from the fifties. Um, this picture on the right is showing somewhere in the middle. So I took on, this is the first project that I, um, a renovation project that I did for myself. Um, it was really fun. Um, so that's showing sort of mid way through. And then the, the large picture in the bottom is I'm actually sitting, you see that white chair on the right with the plant? Well, here I am. Um, uh, so I do um, work from BC as well. So this is um, a shot sort of from my living room into my dining room. So it was really fun um, to create um, a space for me and, and, and to choose all the things that I love. And, and so that was a really fun project. So I included that on this slide to show that, um, you know, it's not all um, work, work, work. Um, this was a labor of love. And so uh, for me um, to see sort of my vision again, come to life um, is really exciting. I don't have professional photos done yet of my project, but I wanted to show you um, sort of the after. Um, finally, um, here we are. Um, um, do we have any questions, comments? Um, I've kind of listed here how to, how to reach me if you have any questions or comments going forward. Um, but does anyone have any questions? Awesome, Julie. That was awesome. Oh, I, I'm, I went over time. So oh, yeah, no, that's good. Dude. <laughs> it, it, it was so natural. So, uh, I, the time wasn't really a factor. I don't think. Uh, just uh, some, just a comment. First of all, like I, I, to me, you're such an inspiration for others. You know, whether they're in the workforce or somebody young that you know, make it, it's okay to have a career shift. And uh, you know, and also that idea of becoming an entrepreneur, I, I, I really like that. I mean, you can. You mentioned you can go work for a firm, or you can, you can work for yourself. And and uh, and I think that's 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 we don't sometimes hear enough from somebody that's kind of made yeah. that the process around it a question i had um is it yeah. some of that balance thing is not as sorry i say balance but some of the stresses on the job are you like do you tackle one job at a time or you have multiple jobs on the fly at once um i have multiple jobs on the fly at once so you're um i remember during covid um early covid um i i had like 14 files open meaning I had 14 uh, clients, I had 14 um, timesheets, I had 14, um, you know, schedules and invoices. Um, it was a lot. Um, and it was then that I considered um, hiring help. Um, as a lot of firms were doing, we were hiring um, additional people. Um, but how I and I talk about choosing your projects, um, I it's really important to sort of almost feather that in and have and not be at the exact same place with every single project at the same time. So you don't want to be in that planning stage and the drawing stage with 13 different projects, right? So you, I try, we try to schedule. Um, and that's another thing we talk about with people with their expectations on time. And then you try to schedule it so that you're not in the same place with every project at the same time. So I may take, I may say have for me, I'm most comfortable with three to five renovations at any given time, but they're all at different stages. And then I always like to, to fill sort of any voids or, and cause I still love doing furnishing projects. So then I'll fill in, you know, doing, taking on smaller projects for either past clients or for referrals from people to do um, some furnishings and soft finishes. I suppose it depends on the size of the project. I, I Absolutely. Yep. Sure. Yep. For sure. One of the things I want to just, add, just touch on briefly here. So your your home designer uh, kind of that's your, that's where you kind yeah. of yeah residential is my I've done very limited commercial um, but residential yes is definitely my focus. But I'd be right in assuming that'd be quite a different approach because you're because your person or people you're dealing with are they don't they don't live in that space it's a it's a working yes. space shared by many people or something so it is and also a lot of the. Um, so a lot of the drawings, a lot of the codes, a lot of the rules are are different for commercial versus residential. So um, for me, I just haven't taken that time to, um, you know, to make that part of my of my portfolio. Yeah. Or do you have anything else there? No, she did an amazing job of covering everything. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank you, Gord. I appreciate it. I just thank, thank you guys for asking me to do this. Um, when Kevin asked me, I was I was a heck yes from the beginning because as I, I I clearly remember, you know, being 17 and 18 and and trying to figure everyone asks you, right? It's, you, it's almost you hit grade 11 or even grade 10. And 
people, what do you want to, what are you going to do when you're done school? And it was such a difficult, um, it was so difficult to come up with an answer and to have any confidence. And then some people know, some people know exactly what they want to do from a young age or, or when they're a young adult, but I went into commerce because I was good at math. Uh, it came very easy to me. And, uh, and I'm sure I sat, sat in Kevin's office and we talked about that and well, maybe you should look at commerce and I'm, okay. So, but that's a large part of why I did it. I didn't know the opportunities that it was going to give me. Even when I went to Calgary and got a, a business, uh, was it, a business analyst position with, um, with a large oil company. I didn't really know what that meant. Um, but that's okay. Um, you're, that's what it's all about. You're constantly learning and evolving, I think, as a, as a student and, and as an adult. Yes, that's the process is, is for sure. I think we'll stop the recording now. Okay.